Welcome back, Canonites, for more Hunt the Truth. As usual, the episodes just keep getting better and upping the ante. So let's get right to it. The episode starts with Maya recalling something her father had once described, a natural cow farm, a place that advertised selling non-synthesized meat. The reality was a place where cows stood in rows, cramped together, creating a breeding ground of death and disease, and what Maya once thought of as the worst smell in the universe. And yet, it paled in comparison to the smell of the Kigyar pirate ship. The walls caked with soot, blood, and shit, layered so thick the halls were more like caves. We've heard before that the post-war era left many ships in disrepair, but this is beyond anything we've seen, and it's worse than I had ever imagined it could be. As we learn later, the ship itself is but a shadow of its former self, barely held together with parts from captured ships. Almost a Frankenstein ship, if you like. The Jackal Pirates drag Maya, Meshach, and Boswick through the ship, and as they learn from a translation by Bibi, towards the airlock. And as tense as the situation is, Bibi still manages to make us laugh with a quick quip about the Kigyar using abuseful language. Anyway, the guard briefly takes his eyes off the humans, and Boswick takes the opportunity to attack. She gets a good opening hit, but... Well, Kigyar are bigger. After that, the Kigyar decides to send them out the airlock in pieces. After a moment of pause, Maya is able to gather herself, and remembering the research she had compiled on Kigyar's psychological profiles during the Covenant War, has Bibi translate a message. She declares that she and her compatriots are very valuable prisoners, and that the shipmaster would be angry if the guard killed them. Well, that's the polite way to put it. After a moment of tension, Maya face to face with her Kigyar captor, the guard decides not to risk her words being false and takes them to the ship mistress. And God, when we meet her. Once again, excellent work from Eisenberg and, as I recently learned, Sonic Pool post production with making the ship mistress's voice. Named Terzol, her voice is a wonderful mix between human speech and the Kigyar squawks we've come to know. Even more interesting, I think at least, is that Churizol speaks in broken sentences, often reverting to native Kigyar, forcing Bibi to translate. She has clearly only learned English as a necessity, and it really helps keep that alien vibe. So the guard presents Maya and company to Churizol, described as being absolutely huge, and she demands to know what value they could hold, that if they want to prove their worth, that they need to present her with 60,000 credits. Maya tries to get Churizol to let them go back to their ship to do just that, but they are instead thrown in the brig and told they have an hour to get the 60,000. Once in their cell, Maya, Mishak, and Bostwick find themselves in the presence of a Sunghili prisoner. He's sporting a broken, bleeding leg. When Bibi asks if the Kigyar had hurt him, he scoffs at the idea and reveals that something called a Livruka had caused the damage to his leg. What is a Livruka? Apparently an ancient word that Bibi has no translation for. I'll give you one guess what it means, though. Hell, I'll give you a hint. It has to do directly with Halo 5. As we learn, this Sanghili had been on a diplomatic mission to a human colony when a guardian awoke and his leg was damaged during the incident. As he goes on, he reveals that a demon had desecrated a holy site and states that the awakening of the guardian was the consequence. As he dies, he blames humans for what is to come and states that this awakening is only the beginning. With hope all but lost, BB tries to convince Maya to let him transmit the data Ari had gathered to Oni, a final act to help humanity. Naturally, Mishak doesn't respond well to this, and him and Bibi start yelling at each other until Maya tells them both to shut up. She doesn't care anymore about helping others, only that she and them are going to die. However, Bostwick suddenly speaks up, giving a wonderful speech about making sure that everyone knows the truth and, as Maya had once said as Pharaoh, fighting for something bigger. Unfortunately, it's too late. Kigyar guards show up and drag Bostwick out, likely to her death. Maya stirred to action by Boswick's words, and now, her fate, resolves to escape and rescue her friend. Looking around the cell, she sees that the walls that have fallen in disrepair weren't really fixed up all that well. Ripping off a loose panel, she finds an energy conduit and decides to plug BB into the ship. BB protests, stating that the shock could kill both him and Maya, and noting that UNSC AI are forbidden from interfacing with Covenant ships. Which is weird, since we've seen it done many times, even by BB himself. Anyway, since BB is but a lapel, he really has no choice. Maya has him interface with the energy conduit, and the electrical shock sends Maya flying across the room. Thankfully, both she and BB survive, and the energy door to their cell is shut down. Maya sends Mishak to the hangar, telling him to hide out there, while she, with BB's help, tracks down Boswick. After carefully sneaking through the ship and coming across a few more horrors, she tracks Boswick to what I can only call a trophy room. The walls are covered with dead aliens and humans, staked there in a manner that almost seems to tell the story of the Covenant War. Then she spots Bostwick, a Kigyar surgeon preparing to add her to the disturbing mural. Grabbing a Jeral Hanai skull, Maya sneaks up behind him and bashes his brains in. 
Grabbing Bostwick, the two make a mad dash for the hangar. Just before they make it to their ship, though, Cherzol shows up, none too happy. Luckily, Maya has one other out. Noting that she finds it strange that the Kigar ship hadn't jumped to slipspace since picking them up, Maya deduces that the slipspace drive for the ship is in disrepair. BB confirms this. So, Maya makes them an offer. She'll fix the drive on the promise that she and her friends are set free and their ship returned to them. Cherzol agrees. And that concludes this episode. While I'm sad that we didn't get to see any returning Kigar characters, this new band of pirates was absolutely a blast to encounter. The shipmistress Churzol in particular was an absolute delight, and the encounter with the Sanghili prisoner was interesting too. I love how the series has avoided directly talking about the Guardians, but still finds ways to reference the known events of Halo 5. Most of all, I love the descriptions of this ship. The horrible smells Maya encounters, the revolting sights, I could clearly imagine it all, and I actually gagged at one point as my mind imagined some of the metaphorical, and in some cases literal, shit that she encountered. Bravo, Eisenberg. Bravo. Anyway, thanks for joining me once again. We're two weeks away from Halo 5 with presumably only two episodes left and I cannot wait to find out what happens. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon, and may you all continue to shine. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you. Profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.